I think it's worth um, starting with a reminder of, of what we are trying and not trying to do at Scottish Mortgage. Our aim is to find the world's most exciting and promising growth companies when they're underappreciated and own them from youth through until maturity. We aren't trying to second guess markets. Um, we aren't trying to make macroeconomic predictions. For us, um, being supportive owners of, of the world's best growth companies is central to the task. And the reason that, that we approach the task in, in this way is that we believe over the long run, markets are driven by a small number of exceptional companies, companies that turn out to be much more successful than, than investors ever expected. And that is true in good economic times. It's true in more difficult times. Um, it's true in buoyant markets. It's true in, in weak markets. And so it's essential that we stick to that core task of, of being patient owners of growth companies. We're very conscious that um, the last year has not been a particularly good one for our shareholders. Um, in trying to understand why that is, I think you need to, to um, um, extend the time frame a bit and, and look back to, to the start of 2020. Now, as COVID um, began to take hold early in 2020, the, the value of the, the portfolio fell dramatically, around 20% in the space of five weeks. And so we, looked, we sat down and we were looking at, at, at our holdings. We were talking about balance sheets and, and financial resilience. And what we weren't doing was, like many at the time, trying to become an epidemiologist. We didn't know what was going to happen with the virus. We didn't believe that we could predict that. Instead, it, the question we were asking is, has the fundamental investment case for, for the companies that we own change? You know, are, are they in a robust financial position? Can they deal with the difficult environment that they find themselves in? And if we could answer positively to all of those questions, we resolved to do nothing. And of course, over the subsequent 12 months, it turned out to be um, a very strong period for the operating performance of many of the companies that we owned. There were trends that had been in place um, for some time that were accelerated, brought forward by, by the circumstances of COVID. So the companies that allowed us to socialize when we were stuck at home, the companies that allowed us to work when we couldn't go into the office, um, and the companies that um, facilitated uh, commerce in a period where we, we couldn't get to the shops. And so these companies grew at exceptional rates through 2020. The good news is that they continue to grow. Um, now, it, it is a more difficult environment. Inflation is rising, interest rates are rising. Um, but these companies are not giving up the gains that they made um, through 20 and 21. Um, instead, they, they are stronger, larger businesses. Um, and whilst there's some period of, of consolidation as, as consumer habits change, as, as we've all got out of the house and started traveling again, these companies continue to grow. And I think that speaks to the strength of the really long run changes um, from which they benefit. So moving the clock forward then from that COVID period to today, a number of, of our holdings have, have seen quite weak share prices. The, the, the environment which they're operating in is, has changed again. And we find ourselves in a similar position. Looking through the portfolio, um, thinking about the company's ability to ad adapt to the changing environment. Do, are they able to fund themselves? Do they have financial resilience? Um, and does the investment case remain intact? And where, again, where we can answer those, those questions positively, we aim to be very long-term supportive shareholders. The, the broader macroeconomic environment is um, challenging. It's very uncertain at the moment. And we have, we have, have not 
moved from from being epidemiologists to being experts on inflation. We we we, we think it's very difficult to predict the out the outputs of a complex system. So instead, we we stick to focusing on companies. Now, if you look at the the portfolio um, construction over the past ten years, it's been underpinned by two fundamental contentions about the world. The first has been that China um, and China's economic emergence into a into a dominant power um, has a fundamental um, um, impact on on all sorts of areas of the global economy. And and the second contention has been that. Um, technology was was leading to significant change and disruption in a whole number of, of established industries, and I think these two contentions can help us to understand what is going on in the world today. Technology companies have, um, in certain instances, become very large, very influential in society, and rightly they're attracting much greater scrutiny from politicians and from regulators. We think it makes it harder for these these companies to grow when you are, are are at such scale and you have to to make such a large investment in ensuring that your that your business is fit for purpose. It becomes it becomes more difficult to to introduce new products and services to delight consumers. And for those reasons, we've been coming out of the big um, Western online platforms. We've sold Alphabet, the owners of Google. We've we've sold Facebook. Um, um, for slightly different reasons to do with um, um, founder Jeff Bezos stepping back, we've also been reducing Amazon. But it's it's been a mistake over over the past year um, to have applied that logic to the, the Western online companies and and not to have applied it to their Chinese counterparts. Um, companies, big holdings like like Meituan, like Alibaba, like Tencent. Um, have struggled um, in the face of a very difficult and hostile regulatory environment in China. Now, the underlying reason for that is 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 a government um, policy to try to address inequality in the Chinese uh, system, and I think rightly they've they've been looking at trying to ensure that the the, the bottom five hundred million people in in China's income distribution can benefit. From from the, the the economic progress and prosperity that China has experienced, and the way that um, affects our companies is that generally they are marketplace businesses. They sit between um, um, consumers and those that they're buying products and services from, and so the government, the Chinese government, is keen to ensure that they aren't extracting an economic rent from that position. And also that they're they're paying fair wages um, to, to to those that they employ. The companies have um, been adapting to to this new environment. Um, our take is that it that it doesn't um, affect their their long term opportunity. So if you're a Meituan um, in the in the food delivery space, um, you know, there is is likely a limit to what you can charge per order. Um, we saw the founder Xing Wang recently. And he was talking about a long-term assumption of charging one RMB for a delivery. Um, that's about 16 cents, and he's okay with that. You can, you know, the economics of the business, because of its scale, can can work at that size. Um, at the, on the other side of it, um, the government is also keen to ensure that they pay their delivery drivers properly, um, because people in those roles are likely to be in that bottom half of the income distribution, and and those are exactly the individuals that, that the government is is trying to target. So the, the, that that um, regulatory agenda seems to us reasonably sensible. We think the companies can adapt. The challenge has been that myriad ministries and regulators within China have then set about implementing that direction, and the companies have struggled to some extent with with death by a thousand cuts. The Chinese government has realised this, um, and more recently um, have taken measures to try to stop this process. And there are good reasons for doing that. I think geopolitical um, events, the war in Ukraine, um, has caused them to to take stock of the of the need for domestic champions and domestic growth, but also to retain um, Western investors. And at the same time, um, this this 
set of um, constraints on the tech sector has led to a lot of, of uh, redundancies. And employment is really important to the, the Chinese government. It would be counterproductive to their aims you know, if, if you see continued, continued weakness in tech sector employment. So we're pretty optimistic that um, we're, 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 we're on a more positive trajectory in, in China now, um, that the companies have had time to adapt, that the government is satisfied that it's, that it's achieved some of its objectives. And, and these remain really strong entrepreneurial businesses. Um, we see some of the, the best technology and business model innovation in the world come out of, of, of Chinese companies. Um, and so, so we're, we're more optimistic um, on that front. If you look at um, some of the, the processes of change that have underpinned the growth of our companies, um, it's also worth revisiting whether they are intact in, 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 in this weaker environment. We've believed that greater understanding of the molecular and genomic basis of disease would lead to better and more personalized tre treatments for patients. Um, we, we believe that um, consumer attention is moving from traditional media to online and, and digital media. Um, we think the economy is, is transitioning away from carbon-based fuels, carbon-based transport um, to cleaner alternatives. And when I look at these trends, um, ask, well, you know, has, have, have those contentions come into question in, in the weaker environment that we find ourselves in? Um, and, and for me, the strong answer is no. Yes, there may be, may, may be a more uncertain macroeconomic outlook, but those processes of change will continue. And I think in some instances accelerate in response to, to what we're seeing. And so you know, as, as we start to think about the, the outlook, um, having businesses that, that are resilient, that have strong balance sheets, that are going after big opportunities and benefiting from these fundamental processes of change within the economy, rather than simply overall economic growth, um, allows us to, to look forward to, to the future with optimism. <laughs>